Yo guys, what's going on? I'm Tim Kelly. This is Section215.com, Philadelphia's premier sports site. Thank you for checking it out. If you haven't gone over to check out Section215.com and you're watching this on YouTube, I'll leave the link in the description. It is Section215.com. Now, Eagles season over two days ago, and I'm still heartbroken in the sense that the Sixers are not tanking like we hoped they were, and they're going to be mediocre enough that they're not going to get a good pick. The Flyers will be in the playoffs. They might win a series. I don't see them doing much beyond that. And then the Phillies, I used to be able to look forward to the Phillies after uh, Andy Reid made a huge, costly mistake in a playoff game because the Phillies would be a World Series contender. I had that from about 2009 to 2012. Uh, that that's out the window because the Phillies are probably going to win 70 games this year, 75 games tops. So I, I really have nothing to look forward to, to be honest. But you guys don't really care. Let me get into the top five possible destinations for Michael Vick. And the one thing I want to say is a lot of these teams, I believe two of these teams on this list don't have head coaches right now, so that's going to determine a lot. And one of these teams just hired a head coach, so... Uh, it, it will determine a lot what the, the teams on this list that do not have head coaches, what head coaches they ultimately do hire. The first team that it would be an honorable mention, kind of a wild card, would be the St. Louis Rams. Jeff Fisher down there, not sure if he'd be interested in Michael Vick, but if they say that they're tired of Sam Bradford's injuries, they want to get out of that huge contract, and they, they just... Uh, are ready to move on from Sam Bradford, then I think Michael Vick could fit there. Michael Vick, Tavon Austin, that could be a fun combination. Probably not likely, though. Getting into the actual list, at number five is a team that would be a very interesting team. That's the Houston Texans. Now, a lot of us were all under the assumption that they were going to take Teddy Bridgewater at the number one pick, and that was going to be a done deal. It sounds like they're willing to trade the pick, and that taking Bridgewater is probably not all that likely, that they'd rather take the best player available because they don't view this as a rebuilding process. That's what I got at a Bill O'Brien's introduction press conference there. So... If they do that, they could bring Matt Schaub back for a year. And I think under O'Brien, Matt Schaub could probably have a pretty good season. And I view O'Brien kind of more as a guy that is a pocket quarterback type coach. He coached Matt McGloin. He coached Christian Hackenberg. He coached Tom Brady when he was with the Patriots. So maybe he wouldn't be interested in Michael Vick. Maybe Michael Vick wouldn't be a fit there because he really isn't a pocket quarterback. Except Andy Reid thought he was. That's another story. But... You put Michael Vick into that team, and if Bill O'Brien can make it work, you look at Michael Vick, you get a healthy Arian Foster, you have uh, Andre Johnson on the outside, and then you have a defense with J.J. Watt, Brooks Reed. I mean, it, it sounds like a formidable team that could turn around and be competitive, maybe win a playoff game next year. Ultimately, Michael Vick would not be a long-term option, I don't think, but... Uh, it's certainly an idea. At number four, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, a, a very good coach in Gus Bradley. The problem is Gus Bradley's a defensive-minded coach. Now, I think he's going to turn this team around, but ultimately, right now, they do not have a lot of offensive talent. Maurice Jones-Drew has declined rapidly the last couple years. They're going to let him test free agency. I'd be shocked if he's back. They're going to have a high draft pick, so we'll see what they are able to do with that. They may end up getting one of the quarterbacks in the draft. Probably one of these teams on this list will end up in that situation, if not more than one. But I think that the Jags are a team that's going to be brought up because they obviously need a quarterback. Michael Vick can make things exciting. But Michael Vick, I actually think, unlike a lot of people, I think Michael Vick will have a choice between at least two teams, probably two, three, four teams that he wants to go to. The Jaguars are a team that would give him pretty much a guaranteed chance to start because he's not going to have to really compete with Blaine Gabbard or Chad Henney. I, I think that uh, competition would speak for itself that Michael Vick would be the best out of those three. But it could also be career suicide if he goes there and tries to do it all for one year and really struggles and then no one decides to pick him up the next year. I'm not sure that that's a very good place if you're Michael Vick to go to. Number three is a place that's very interesting. That's the Cleveland Browns. Now, they do not have a head coach after firing Rob Trzynski. Uh, and then ultimately, like I said at the beginning of this video, it depends what direction they go in. And we all know that Brian Hoyer played a really, really good game and a half under Chud. Had he not gotten hurt, torn his ACL, maybe they find out he's a franchise quarterback. Maybe Chud's still there. There's a lot of things that would have happened with Brian Hoyer. I think it depends on who the ne new next head coach is. 
But at the very least, Brian Hoyer deserves a chance to compete for this job. If they decide not to do that, Michael Vick could walk into a pretty good situation here. They don't have a star running back, but they have a very good off offensive line led by Joe Thomas, an all-pro. You have Josh Gordon, who's developing into one of the best uh, threats in this league at the wide receiver position. So that could be an interesting team if the Browns decide not to go with Brian Hoyer, if they decide not to go, they're obviously not going to go with anyone currently on their roster besides Brian Hoyer, and if they decide uh, that they'd rather have a guy like Michael Vick, that would bring probably a little bit more immediate impact than anyone you're going to get in this year's draft, then, I mean, that, that could be an interesting team. At number two is the Oakland Raiders. They have Denarius Moore and Rashad Jennings. It sounds like... Uh, Darren McFadden's not likely to be back next year, and with the injuries, that makes uh, sense, I think. They're a team as Dennis Allen as a head coach, second-year coach. You don't get the sense, though, that Dennis Allen has a lot of stability. You don't get that sense with any uh, quarterback that walks into that or, or any uh, coach that's in Oakland, and it was with Al Davis, and it's been now without Al Davis that you really just the Raiders is not a team that they are not a team that you want to take a head coaching spot with because you just don't. It doesn't feel like you have much stability. It doesn't feel like you have much backing. If you have one bad season, you're probably gone. Dennis Allen is a guy that's in that situation. He's in his second year in a mediocre season at best this year. So if you bring Michael Vick in, that would get that immediate impact that they're probably looking for. For the Raiders' sake, it would make perfect sense. Michael Vick has turned into a leader, and we saw that. Michael Vick is still hungry. He talked about it, how uh, he still believes he can be a starting quarterback in this league. He kept his mouth shut through the Nick Foles thing. He backed Riley Cooper. The leadership is there for Michael Vick, and I think that that would be a very good influence on the Oakland Raiders team. And I, honestly, the, from where Michael Vick was when he first came to the Eagles to now, I can't believe I'm saying that, but Michael Vick's leadership was through the roof this season. The best option for Michael Vick, though, and potentially this team, would be the Minnesota Vikings. They have Adrian Peterson creeping towards 30. You want to get him to win. You sign Greg Jennings, that huge deal last offseason. You have Kyle Rudolph, who's a really good tight end. This does not seem, and they don't have a head coach, but this does not seem like a situation where you want to draft another young quarterback, have him go through, have him go through a two or three year learning process. This seems like a situation where you hire a coach, you try and win now, you still have the best overall running back in the NFL when he's healthy, and then you add Michael Vick in, the threat of AP running, the threat of Michael Vick, that could be a dangerous combination. If you do it right, he throws a deep ball, so that'd go good with Greg Jennings. So I think if you bring Michael Vick in, the Vikings are a playoff team next year. They're in a crowded division. I think the Bears only improve next year. The Packers are going to be right in the mix. And depending on who the Lions get, it sounds like Ken Wisenhunt's probably going to end up there. I think he turns Matt Stafford around, and they're competitive. But I think if you put Michael Vick on the Vikings and he can stay healthy, which is a big if with Michael Vick, but if he can stay healthy for at least 14 or 15 games next year, this is going to be a competitive team. They went to the playoffs two years ago with Christian Ponder playing quarterback. Let's let, let, let that sink in. If they could do that two years ago, and I know the Bears are different, I know the Lions are different, Packers are mostly the same, but if they could do that two years ago, imagine what happens if they, even if Michael Vick plays at an average level, which I still think he's an above average quarterback, I think he's a top 20 quarterback, if he can do that, then doesn't this team become a, a playoff team again? I, that, that's the way I look at it. I think with Adrian Peterson, that would take a lot of pressure off Michael Vick. There's no question that if you look at what Michael Vick did in the short time with Chip Kelly this year, he was producing at a high level. And people don't understand. People say, oh, well, when they came in, that's when the when Nick Foles came in, that's when the team started to play well. That might be when the team overall, Riley Cooper, the defense actually picked up and the offensive line picked up. But Michael Vick pretty well in his time in Chip Kelly's system. Ultimately, an injury cost him that job. Nick Foles came in, produced really well. Michael Vick got that chance to come back in after Nick Foles had the down game against the Cowboys. And he ultimately was too injured with that uh, high hamstring strain. So his ego's career is over, but I still believe with his running ability, which he still can do very well, if you get him in the right system, Michael Vick can have success. He can take your team to the playoffs. I think Super Bowl's a stretch, but I don't think any of the teams that I named would view him 
uh, as the quarterback that would take him to the Super Bowl. The only team on this list that I could legitimately see taking him to the Super Bowl are the Vikings. If their defense turn picks up, uh, it is better than they were this year. And then if Adrian Peterson runs at an MVP level, then maybe that's a possibility. Other than that, the Texans would view him as a more short-term option, and the three other teams on the list really aren't going to be... Um, playoff contenders even with them. I guess maybe the Browns could be, but the Jags and the Raiders, you're not looking at a playoff team. You're looking more to bring him in for excitement and just the fact that you have someone that can maybe play the quarterback position a little bit. I know the Raiders have Terrell Pryor, they have Matt McLoin, but they both look like backups to me. Terrell Pryor doesn't even look like a backup because he can't throw the ball. But whatever... Section215.com, Philadelphia's premier sports site. If you haven't checked it out, go check it out. Hit me up on Twitter, Tim Kelly underscore 215, at Sec215, SEC215 for Section215's Twitter. I'll catch you guys next time.